Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If you're meeting for the first time, welcome. My name is Jessica Alexandria, and for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. As you guys can see, we have the chart pulled up for what looks to be one of the more refreshing weeks, energetically speaking, that we haven't felt <laughs> in quite some time. Now, if you know me, you know my mantra, I'm going to say it again. If you know how to work with the planets, you can make them work for you and not against you. These are one of the transits that it's important, or this is one of those weeks where it's important to understand, again, very thoroughly what is happening in the cosmic energies in the skies around us as above, so below, and how that's going to be impacting us down here on Earth and in our intimate world, in our intimate environment. Last week, I gave a few red flags, a few warnings about some really tense transits. I don't know if you guys saw that, witnessed that, saw it unfold in your own personal life. And in the news, there was a lot of tension. There was a lot of aggression, microaggression, angry aggression, very loud aggression um, and expression. It was all about artistic expression. We saw that unfolding in the astrology charts. For a lot of you guys, I ask that you slow down significantly. Hopefully you listened to my advice with that and you were able to fare well with the transits that were happening. This week seems to be a little bit more smooth sailing, but there are some energies here that we want to be fully aware of. So go ahead and get yourself a cup of tea. I am drinking some ginger tea here over on my left. What are you drinking? What are you sipping on? Let me know down in the comments and let's go ahead and dive right in. As I always like to do, I always like to take a few steps back before we look into where we are right now. And the reason why I like to do this is because it is because it helps us to understand why we are where we are today. The main energies that are striking right now is the fact that we have officially Pluto retrograde. Pluto is currently transiting through the sign of Aquarius, retracing its steps back, getting closer and closer to the sign of Capricorn. I did mention this in last week's video, and I've talked about a lot of how Pluto, uh, Pluto through Capricorn transits have been impacting us collectively, especially when it comes to government, polit politics, politics big business and um, like corporations, those things have been crashing and burning. As Pluto retrograde is retracing its steps back to Capricorn, we're gonna start to see those themes showing up even more. In your personal life, you're also going to, unfortunately, unfortunately, have to revisit any type of toxic bonds, connections, things that you may have felt that you've left in the past may find themselves recir recircling or resurfacing back into your existence in your everyday. So even though this transit or even though this influence isn't going to be directly felt by you this week or even the months to come, the closer Pluto gets into um, the energy of Capricorn, the more you're going to want to continue to inner to focus on inner strength and also independence and separating yourself from toxic bonds and connections especially now that pluto is where it is right now aquarius right so the reason why i'm bringing up pluto uh pluto's nearing to um entering back into the sign of capricorn is because it I don't want you guys to be shocked. Some of you guys um, come in, you flow in, you flow out on my YouTube channel. I love that. Whatever, I believe, like I said, intention that whatever message I'm putting out, that it reaches those who it's meant for. So some of you guys are not consistent watchers and viewers. You're gonna hear me mention again and again and again, um, Pluto's nearing um, into the into uh, Capricorn again because we're going to start seeing these major themes that can be frustrating if you feel like you've done all the work and you find like you find that you're taking baby big steps back into things that you broke free from, and with Capricorn it is always connected to um, energies that are really hard to free ourselves from. It's like this in, insufferable impenetrable bond that has a hold on us especially when it comes to commitments bonds long time long term contractual contractual agreements however pluto retrograde transiting through aquarius right now happening the sign of aquarius there's a oh, i love that franklin speaking of tension franklin's barking at two mockingbirds who are fighting right now on the fence um 
Pluto retrograde through the sign of Aquarius is challenging us greatly when it comes to how we connect, how we bond to humanity as a whole, how we contribute to humanity for good or for bad. And also it is largely about, I don't wanna say truth telling, but really uprooting and separating like fantasy into like what is genuine authentic for the sake of the bl blessing the future i hope that makes sense this transit is helping uh, us individually become more in tune to our authentic selves beating to the beat of our own drummer instead of marching like sheep everybody doing the same thing and afraid to rock the boat shake things up as we know it this is going to be felt globally, but this is also going to be felt intimately in your personal life. You've already been feeling these major trend, these major revelations, these major turns happening within you saying, listen, this is how I used to do things. Now those things are no longer important to me. Part of that has to do with the fact that uh, your, uh, Uranus is transiting through Taurus. Our, our goals, our values are shifting greatly, but also what is important to us and who we are is being greatly revolutionized. Um, our priorities are shifting the things that how we spend our day to day is shifting in a great way and most of it is going to be for our highest and greatest good and for a healthier a, a healthier mindset body energy that is going to be beneficial for you in the future this means that again any type of bonds especially when it came to relationships business like our relationship to work overworking ourselves stressing ourselves out these are things that collectively we're watching society pulling away from and even doing the very opposite, rejecting it and almost rebelling instead of showing up in like suit and tie, which was very buttoned up uh, Capricorn energy. Now it's more like baggy or how do I showcase who I am? It's like this act of rebellion. So um, this is going to be un unlocking a lot of uh, free spirited energy within every single one of us. This is going to activate this sense of I'm not going that way anymore. I'm going to do me in the way that feels authentic and genuine, genuine for me. A lot of this energy too is going to be honoring your intuition, your vibe. How do you feel in your everyday experience, in your everyday existence? This is because Saturn is transiting through the sign of Pisces. There is a conflict between um, where th other things lie, business, businesses, society, friendships, relationships, you, how you view yourself, um, and the boundary that is for your highest and greatest good, right? If there's someone here or energy here that is not a vibe, that just feels like it crushes you, that it's depressing you, that it makes you lost within yourself, this is something that you are no longer going to tolerate. You're no longer going to tolerate that. That's um, Saturn's uh, transit through Pisces, strengthening you up even further. Now, these are transits, again, that this is the overarch overarching theme that we're going to be feeling this week that you have already started to feel this week. It's going to be unfolding even stronger. Why I see this as such a positive thing is because can't nobody tell you nothing. <laughs> In the words of someone wise who once said, this can't nobody tell you nothing this is all about me myself and i this is what i'm doing for myself this is you becoming even more empowered in your own authentic uniqueness this is something that is going to be different per person again this this old way of everybody doing the same thing the same way monotonous is being thrown out it's antiquated it doesn't serve you any anymore this how this is going to impact you this is going to open up job opportunities for you where you are creating your own work you are creating your own routine your own schedule you are breaking free you are you are feeling a, a sense of freedom and liberation that is a wonderful thing. It's going to feel like a blessing. It's going to feel like a positive, but it can also be very scary. It can create like a ripple effect in um, the relationships, connections, especially generations before you that may not necessarily agree or understand with the way that you are moving and how, how you're prioritizing your time today. For some of you guys, um, you may find that you have been inhibited, like held back by even like these uh, expectations for education, 
um, for how you're expected to perform in your everyday duties and work with life, responsibilities, parenting, friendships. These are things that you are separating yourself from and saying, I know that this was once a bond, a commitment that I it, that is expected of me, but I don't hold that to myself anymore. And I don't feel a sense of duty and obligation any longer. There's a sense of freedom and, and rebellion that makes me feel like I don't need to show up in the same way. And I'm doing this for my highest and greatest good. So um, I know that this is a lot that we are talking about. These are also transits that have already, have already been, like this is the root, like this is the root of society like or the whole right now the root this is what we want to continue to water we want to continue to nourish it this is something that is a part of the great wheel of fortune of our life that's faded it's karmic it's meant to happen right now we cannot fight it if we fight it we will get sucked into the current pulled down by it and not understand why is this happening especially people who are resistant to change if you yourself are the problem, you're gonna find yourself being broken down. Your spirit is gonna feel broken. You're gonna feel disconnected, separated. You may find yourself relying on these old substances or old things that would force you to show up in the same way. Your body, especially Saturn transiting through Pisces, your body will reject, immediately reject things that are not for you. You're going to have a conflict um, within yourself between okay, this is what I'm actively doing and this is what I feel called to do or this is what is healthy for, for me. You cannot fake the funk any longer when generations before it might've been able to be done. This is the time where you say, you know what, I can't, I can't. Like it will literally, if not, if not make you feel like you're going crazy, it'll make you feel like enough is enough. I do not wish to move this way any longer. Now, that being said, um, beautiful energy here, Taurus. There's so much energy, uh, hyper-focused in the energy of Taurus, which is wonderful because Taurus tends to be an energy that steadies us regardless of your sun, moon, or rising, regardless if you are earth, air, fire, or water. Taurus does have a tendency to kind of steady us and make us steadfast in whatever <laughs> Taurus rules within your, uh, within your chart, but also in that season in our lives. Not only is this energy, all of these energies hyper-focused on the energy of Taurus, like the vibe of Taurus, but on the 7th at 11.22 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I've got my tattoo here that has that time on it, we are going to have the Taurus new moon. This energy is even more going to be focused on steadying ourselves. And also, I want to tell you that intuitively, I was getting, I was hearing the word celebrate, celebration, and I was also seeing a connection intuitively between celebration and ritual. We're going to talk about that a little later on at the end of this video. For right now, let's go ahead and focus on, again, these week's transits. Also, take a shot of your tea every time you hear me say energy, <laughs> every time you hear me use the word energy. I wish that there was a better word. There probably is because um, I feel like I'm overusing it, but I'm just vibing right now. So energy, 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 energy. Hopefully you're drinking decaffeinated tea. Uh, or if you are drinking caffeinated tea, you are going to be lit, honey, about as lit as my candle was. I don't know if you guys noticed that, but the candle went out, which is wild because this candle has a specific intention. And the fact that it went out when we were talking about being steadfast and rebelling and honoring ourselves is pretty telling. Okay, so moving forward into the remainder of the energies of this week on the 6th and on the 7th, Mercury is going to be directly conjunct Chiron. This is going to be happening in a sign of Aries. This is Mer Mercury here representing communication, our mind, how we process information. When it's directly conjuncts, conjoins with, meaning it sits directly on top of Chiron and sign of Aries, this is going to uh, bring up even more even more opportunity potential for you to speak up for yourself, for you to be assertive, especially in all the lessons that you have learned about yourself. The problem with Chiron, and this is not a problem, it's a solution, but the tricky thing about this, about this vibe right now, see I'm trying not to use the word energy, is that this is forcing you to be more bold, assertive, especially with the North Node transiting through the sign of Aries, 
to be more bold and assertive with what your thoughts are, what you're thinking, what you're feeling, what you're planning, what you're doing, and not permissible where you're rolling over on your back and allowing others to control the narrative where you are hiding away from doing difficult things, having difficult, difficult conversations. This is also a wonderful welcomed relief for those of you guys that are very upfront, forward, honest people. This is where you take a step back and allow people the chance to speak up for themselves in the way that it is honorable for them to do so, but maybe they've been waiting or expecting you to do it. This is where if you have, if you are vibing with Mercury and Chiron and North Node and Mars transiting through Aries, energy you are going to receive the reward of this part of the reward is going to look like listen it's going to be less work and less effort because you've already spoke up for yourself you've already stated the fact you've already opened the door you know your intention you know what you said you know what you stated the, the problem is, is that not everybody is going to be on that same wavelength, that same frequency. They haven't grown or evolved into that person that can speak up and be upfront. There are going to be many people, you're going to see this, there are going to be many people who kind of roll over and are passive in their communication. They are going to allow things, they're going to continue to allow things to happen. They're going to be um, kind of bury their head under the sand, kind of try to forget or wait for you to be the bigger person. This is energy that cannot, that will stifle the connection, that will stifle them. And that if you were to continue to um, enable this energy, it would stifle you. And this is exactly what the astrology charts, what the planets don't want for you. It, they do not, they want every single energy around you to be, um, self-erected meaning like it's strong it can stand on its own two feet it doesn't need you spoon feeding it and putting all the work and all the effort in a lot of this has to do with communication Pe things that people need to say things that people haven't said people things are refusing to say people things that people are, are refusing to address this is what chiron mercury north node and Mars transiting through Aries are now pulling up from the root. The image that is that I just got, and this is not intuitive, this is just Jess, <laughs> BFF Jess. Think about the mandrake roots in Harry Potter when you're pulling them up and they just start screaming, they're super uncomfortable, that you almost wanna just push them back into, into the dirt and you're just like, I can't stand it anymore. These are the type of energies that you're dealing with. What is it or who is it that is deciding to stay dormant, that does not wanna speak up? This is the type of person or this is the type of energy that over time will rot in that earth. Do not let that be you. Do not let that be you. The way that you will know that this is you is if there is something that you need to say, if there's something that you need to stand on, if there's something that you need to do, physically, actively do, and you are making excuses, you are procrastinating, you are delegating it and giving it to others to do, this is going to be, this is going to lead to your downfall. This is something that you know that you need to take care of for yourself. You know you need to take care of it for the sake of the relationship. You know you need to take care of it for the sake of your bills. You know you need to take care of it for the sake of the friendship. If you do not have these difficult conversations, these upfront, I know that this is hard to say this, but it needs to be addressed type of conversations, the, that mandrake root is going to sit dormant, lying in the dirt. It's going to be a landmine that will eventually, inevitably, and probably, I put my money on it, under the light of an upcoming full moon will detonate. That's not something that you want to deal with. So the 6th and the 7th are going to be wonderful opportunities for you to capitalize on having those conversations. If the conversation is uh, outside of your control or if this action step is outside of your control, uh, you can't force what other people do or what happens around you. You can only control what it is that you do. It's If that's the case, accept it for what it is and continue to channel in the energy of Pluto retrograde and move forward without it regardless. You got to be okay with outgrowing things. You have to be okay with saying goodbye to things, even if that is a permanent concern for the relationship or for the connection or for that area. 
If not, you are gonna find yourself caught in the web of that person. You're gonna find yourself caught in the web of that energy. You will stunt your own growth, okay? On the seventh again, this is when the sun is gonna be in this beautiful sextile with Saturn. This is the sun right here, steadfast in this sign of Taurus. And then Saturn is right here in the sign of Pluto. This is gonna be representing again, these energies, karma, boundaries, um, things that you are vibing with or that you are outgrowing, making sure that you are not, the word that keeps coming through is like permissible, that you're not signing the permission slip for people to do you a disservice, um, not show up for you in the way that it is that you deserve. Again, you can't control what it is that they're doing, but you can decide, you know what? Blocked, <laughs> blocked, hit the block button move forward, cross, cancel, delete, separate them out of your life. Pluto is pulling up. Pluto is pulling up connections, energies, network, social media, things that are, you have outgrown, things that are not growing. If this is not an energy, it could also be a person. Look at Aquarius. Aquarius is in general, they're going through it. They have to evolve. If they do not evolve, they are doomed to repeat. That is their karma. They have to figure it out for themselves. Now I'm thinking about, I'm in a uh, relationship with an Aquarius. I wonder, I gotta ask him how he's faring. I mean, I can see from the outside. Actually, I think I can see where this is showing up in his life, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna put him on blast. <coughs> oh my gosh. God bless me. Okay, now moving forward. Um, I do have some intuitive messages that it is that I wanna talk to you guys about. Um, and I do want you guys to look out for in the future, sun is going to be, I don't know if you guys are noticing this, the sun again, transiting through Taurus, which is usually stead, steady, steadying and steadfast. When it directly conjoins with Uranus, the planet of, un, of surprise and unexpected developments, um, on the 13th of next week, I believe that's a Monday, that same energy that we thought that we can count on is going to be disruptive to say the very least. I would be very careful about um, relationships, connections, travel, and what I'm doing, like where I'm putting my energy um, on for that weekend. I do know that this weekend is Mother's Day in the United States this could spark some fights if you guys have underlying issues you may feel like you fare better going off on your own doing your own thing for you the sake of yourself <laughs> listen to your feelings listen to your vibe your intuition some of you guys might be feeling a, a sense of like an overwhelming sense of spontaneity I would be curious to see where and how this energy unfolds in your life. What does Taurus rule within your chart? This is where you're gonna see this energy the loudest. It's gonna be very, very loud. Whatever uh, Taurus rules within your chart, that's where you're gonna feel a, a little sense of explosion. This is literally fire and ice conjoined together and it can be very, very explosive, very combative, very like the odds like two things that are very different, just exploding. So just keep that keep that in mind. This, If this was anywhere close to a full moon, I would be very concerned for the collective. However, because the odds of something explosive happening are just 99.79%, I would bet my mortgage on it, you know? However, because we are at a new moon, we are just exiting out of a new moon. Um, well, maybe not just, but there's still the there's still an odd chance for explosion. Keep your eyes on the news for random acts of violence, but also huge accidents. Or this could also be media. Now that I'm looking at the chart, this could be explosive information that. Um, is unveiled in the media that changes, I don't say life as we know it, but just huge revelations. Um, this could be information about our planet. This could be economics, like spending. 
this could be this could be large in politics but having a lot to do with um, leaders or people who think that they are in charge um, because the people are really power to the people right now in a huge way a big big way but in our personal and intimate lives this could be also this could be um, like at, like acts of violence or things that are negatively impacted are negatively impacting our planet so it could be like oil spills I don't want to say volcano exp explosions um, or like earthquakes it's more like an earthquake these are this is very like earthquake type of energy or some type of large revolution when it comes to the health of the planet the health of our earth okay so we'll keep an eye out for that that's going to be uh, tight on the 13th but we're going to be feeling this leading um, from Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So there's going to be a, an orange zone and then a red zone. Look at the days around the 13th as aggressive red zone, red zone times, okay? Does this mean that you move with fear? No, it just means that when it shows up in the news, you'll be like, oh, just said that. She saw that it, she saw that it was going to happen. I would pull an astrocartography um, chart for this. I actually just might, just to see what areas are more prone to this type of explosion. If you guys would like to see that, let me know down in the comments, but I tend to not share my predictions when it comes to world events like this because a lot of people panic and I, that's not my intention here. I am intrigued. When I see uh, transits that are explosive, I don't feel fear. I've always used astrology to help with anxiety because it helps me to know where things are gonna be popping off. Um, and how they're gonna be pop popping off. Okay, let me go ahead and talk to you about intuitively what it is that I'm sensing for this week. So I don't know if you guys remember this, but I saw the word celebration and I also saw the word uh, rituals. This is going to be a week for you to just especially when it comes to the Tauren, the Tauren um, energy here that we're feeling all this week, we wanna start to celebrate the small things. They, they seem small, but they're so significant. It could be making sure that you have a ritual where you are enjoying a cup of tea three times a day, right? Or you, maybe not something that's caffeinated, but something that helps you to reconnect and to, and to nourish you. Oftentimes we go to our altars, oftentimes we go to our prayer areas and we pray for others, we pray for peace, we pray for safety, we pray for things. This is a time to set intention to nourish you and your life. Um, also, this is a wonderful time this week that I'm sensing to give honor to your ancestors for the strength that they give to you, for the blessings that they have given to you, whether you know your ancestors' personal history, their names or their faces or not, they still recognize you. I too, I've heard this many times before, people who have ancestors that have um, tricky histories or interesting stories that they've told things that you may or may not be proud of. I have some of that blood within me as well. I still honor them, especially for their passion and especially for their ability to stand up for what they believe in, even though the end result has turned into something that um, some people would say is unsavory, but I, I honor that. Like I honor that path. I honor the authentic, uh, authenticity and that is blood that lives within me. So even the more difficult parts of their history and their stories are still things that I honor and I celebrate today. Um, everyone's story is going to be different. Um, and there's stories that I haven't heard and there's many different sides to every different story, but I just say that this is the week to honor the ancestor, um, the ancestors. I also think that with so many different energies here that are explosive, changing, constantly switching direction. If you are a human being in the middle of this, which we all are, 
it, if you're watching things and you are setting your sights on something and that thing moves, it can be very triggering and unsettling. This is a time to be okay and to expect change and departure, to honor this shedding, especially to honor your divine feminine. Why do we honor our divine feminine? Because she does not rely on logic and reason. She relies on intuition and the mystery and the unfolding of life. She trusts the process. Honor that part of yourself. Set intention for that part of yourself. For me, fixed candles, going back to my altar, journaling, going for walks, disconnecting, and making sure that I'm not constantly moving and active and in my masculine energy where I'm helping other people, where I'm working my magic for others, even though there's the feminine part of that too, the magic and the mystery. It's the act of disconnecting, separating myself and coming back home to myself. That is what helps me to stay steadfast within my own self, within my own journey, within my own body, within my own mind. For you, honor the shedding that is happening. A lot of this is happening because of Pluto transits, especially now that it's retrograde. There's a huge shedding and an unveiling and unreeling of your past self that is unfolding today. This can be very, very difficult. Some people are going to find this as, okay, clearly I'm shedding here. I'm okay with it. I accept it. Others are going to find it themselves easing more deeper into themselves. Fire energies, you are going to feel like this could be a body slam to you, this shedding process. Air signs, um, this is gonna definitely hyper-focus on adjustment. You just needing to adjust and to pivot often times. Water, this is going to feel like that shedding energy. It should, I don't wanna say that's gonna be easier, but you have a sense of understanding. Earth energy, this will, you will fare easier, especially if you're grounding within yourself. This is something that if you are not vibing and if it doesn't feel easy or if it doesn't feel like something that um, you can go with, that you can flow with, it's because you're disconnected from yourself. You need to ground yourself. You're too much in your head and worrying oftentimes about the future or you might be caught in depression, kind of stuck in the past. So this is where we kind of ground ourselves. Easier said than done, but journaling, talking, and stabilizing yourself is a way to uh, work with these energies. So yeah, like I was saying, the themes here are gonna be about steadying yourself, grounding yourself. That's gonna be the themes of Taurus. Um, the other thing that I wanna talk to you guys about is again, especially as the sun is gonna be getting closer and closer to this conjunction with Uranus, it is important that you try not to hold on to the to these little strings of your life and trying to keep them all together. That is exhausting. It is exhausting to try to hold yourself together, trying to hold everything together. So what I would say that you fixate your, your eyes on and your intention on is on the future and what you can intuitively sense and feel for yourself. If you do not have a vision for your future, then it is okay and perfectly wonderful to say that in this moment, I am open to the process and I am co-creating with the universe. I am co-creating with the divine. I'm co-creating with divine energy, with goddess energy or with God or the divine to create the highest and greatest outcome for my life. And in the meantime, I celebrate where I am today, okay? Um, rituals, again, I just really want to hyper-focus on ritual. Something that you can do every day, like, like you would honoring an ancestor, like for real, um, that helps you to nourish yourself from drinking water to adding specific, uh, fruits or vegetables or mint, like herbs in your water. For example, mint, moringa, lemon, strawberries, cucumber in your water, making sure that you are putting back into yourself uh, during this week is going to be, you're going to feel the effects of it. Also find different ways to celebrate your life, your journey. If this means that you, while you're eating, you're not scrolling through your phone, you don't have the TV on, you're not distracting yourself, you're going over all the things that you're grateful for, all of the things that it is that you enjoy, this is going to help to steady you, to ground you, to stabilize you, okay? Also, um, tangible things, touch, are very earth, Taurus, and nature. Taste, touch, smells, the senses. Let's go ahead and activate that a little further this week. Now, for those of you guys that are big into magic, intention setting, there are some items that I highly recommend. Each one of them can be found within my apothecary, especially. 
the Bird of Paradise candle, fix candle, which I just happen to have here right now, is going to be wonderful the, for the week ahead. I um, This candle is for infusing your life with juicy, 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 full, ripe energy. Um, it's just filling your cup, overflowing your cup, especially when it comes to honoring the self. I also, this candle here, which just went out again, which is so funny and so telling. She's too close to the window, but also it's a message. This is about relighting. For me, this this when I created this candle, I set the intention for Bahati Love Notes for growth and expansion and beauty and joy and like heart, from the heart, right? Bird of Paradise is more solar plexus, sacral chakra, self-worth, self-value. Self um, this candle does not have a name yet, my green candle. It is gonna be listed under custom intentions. The reason why is because it has gardenia from my garden, as well as other herbs that I'm not listening list, listing on the internet. But the intention is um, for again, growth, abundance, um, step like this energy of steadying yourself, this energy of fertility, this energy of blessing and security, but growth with that. Think of a garden. That's what this, uh, intention, this fixed candle is intention is going to be all about. It'll be listed. How you can purchase it. This is something that you are interested in is under custom candles and say the growth candle. Just say the growth candle, I'll know exactly what it is that you're talking about and I will make enough. Do you keep in mind that it is just me that works at my altar. I don't have minions or robots. I'm not Amazon. I, it's not that I'm intentionally trying to take your take my time. I'm also pregnant. I'm moving a little slower, but very, very girl. Don't even get me started on my dreams lately. Oh, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother chapter um, or a whole nother conversation. Being pregnant is <laughs> such a blessing, but it is different. And the intuition, the dreams are things that I, I have to write down the download. The downloads are insane. So shout out to my body and shout out to the journey. Um, other things that I highly recommend are the Pluto Death Intention Oil, especially now that Pluto is retrograde. I just happen to have it right here in front of me. This candle is about ushering in, honoring in major transition and change within your life. Um, now that Pluto is retrograde, it's just helping to pull up from the root and discard and throw away that which uh, does not serve you. As well as for those of you guys that are focused on money, resources, security, always time and time tried true is the uh, money and abundance oil or the money um, money uh, fixed candle those things I will link down below and anything else that I can think of oh I do have some good luck um, intention oils that I created from I think it was when Jupiter moved or no when Jupiter uh, transited into Taurus which is so interesting I had I made a bunch of those and I highly recommend them. I have maybe 50 bottles left and that's that's uh, um, not an exact number but that's what I can think of off the top of my head. There's it, it's definitely in limited amounts. Okay. So until then, you guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. This reading was very specific for a general audience. If you would like to narrow that down even further, I do have a subscription service called Bahati Love Notes. It is $15 a month. I will link a coupon code down below. It is exclusive access to pretty often, I don't wanna say daily, um, but very often readings to cover you throughout the month. It is a small circle of people that are receiving um, those readings and they get sent to your email. They get sent to a little blog spot where you can access them as I've already finished shuffling and recording them. Typically I shuffle in the morning or later on as the sun is setting. That is usually my prime time for shuffling for others. And um, yeah, that's very beneficial. There's also a lot of journal prompts. If you are someone that likes to journal, this would be a, 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 a gift, honestly, that you can give to yourself or to a friend. Bahati Love Notes, again, it's a subscription service, tarot. Um, I'll link it down below. Until then, guys, thank you so much for hanging out with me. 
and I will <laughs> see you in the next video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be blessed. It was wonderful sharing time with you.